The bar just keeps rising higher for crossover pop singer Taylor Swift. She is now the first woman to replace herself at the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Swift recently came under scrutiny after removing her music catalog from digital music service Spotify, saying, quote, musicians deserve to be paid for their work. The power play is definitely not hurting her brand. Swift's album surpassed the two million sales mark in just three weeks. Here to break it down for us is Zach Greenberg. He is Forbes senior editor. Zach, welcome back to Arise Exchange. Uh, Taylor Swift much. is a powerhouse. She controls her own business. What is this fight with Spotify about? Sure thing. Well, Taylor Swift recently put out her new album, 1989. It sold over a million copies its first week. It was the first uh, platinum album of the year, uh, amazingly enough. Hmm. And then she went and pulled all of her music, including her back catalog, from Spotify. Uh, now, you know, a lot of people are talking about is this, you know, a big problem for Spotify? What does this mean for Taylor Swift? Uh, I think there are a lot of interesting things at, at play here, and it's a little bit more than meets the eye. Okay, so there are quite a few things. So she says Spotify does not pay artists enough. Is that true? Depends who you ask, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I think what it comes down to, uh, yeah, sure, it's better than Napster. It's better than LimeWire. The artists are getting something from it. Is it um, better than radio play? Because in radio, it's the publishing that gets the music. Right, the, the recording of, artist right. does not get paid on radio play. It's the songwriter. Mm -hmm. So if you're both a songwriter and a singer, then you're great on radio. But if you don't write your own songs, then you're not. And Taylor Swift uh, owns a piece of her own record label. Right. And which is up for sale. Right, indeed. Uh, and the other thing is that Spotify is owned in part by the major record labels. Taylor right. Swift is not on a major record label. Uh, you know, so I think she has less incentive than most artists, um, or rather her label does, and her, by virtue of owning a piece of her own indie label, uh, she has less of an incentive to want, the, the, to want Spotify to do well. The music industry has always been a convoluted connection of all these various interests. So let's back up a moment. If you are a recording artist, how do you earn money today? Well, there's a, a number of different ways. I mean, you know, if you want to earn money on your music, right, um, it's a matter of are you going to go, you know, are you going to sell your music on vinyl and CD? Mm -hmm. You know, like there are still people who like that. Uh, are you going to do it on the streaming services? Are you going to do the iTunes downloads? We're going to need to define vinyl for a bunch of people. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, but most of the money is made on the road these days by big acts like Taylor Swift. I yeah, mean, that's and, the and, funny and, part. Right. It's really they make the money performing, don't they? Right, and you know, in a way, the new music is kind of a tool to get the, the uh, crowds mobilized to come to those stadium shows. Okay, those but streaming shows. services have changed the whole entire formula. You no longer buy vinyl, certainly. You no longer even buy CDs, right? right. Um, it is all about individual song sales, uh, which in some ways makes it harder or easier for an artist because they don't have to kind of put all the other junky tracks on on the CD. So how important then is it to resolve this issue with Spotify because there's going to be others? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely important. And, you know, I think what it comes down to, people don't really realize it, the, Spotify does not pay the artist directly in most cases. They pay the label, the label pays the artist. And so a lot of these kind of, you know, not so great deals and these not so great payments that are coming out of Spotify and streaming in general uh, has to do more with the, the splits agreed upon between the artist and the major record labels. That's going to have to change because I think, you know, part of the reason those splits are agreed to because the record label used to serve as distributor. That was mm -hmm. kind of their main purpose. Mm -hmm. But if marketing Spotify indi marketing right, distribution. But if Spotify is the one doing the distribution, you know, why is the record label getting such a big cut? And I think that's uh, a question well, that's gonna have to be answered. Who's gonna win out overall? Is it the streaming services or is it sort of the iTunes platform where you're downloading music? Or is it gonna one's gonna be the record store and one's gonna be radio if you wanna go back to those old terms? I think streaming has basically already won. I mean, you know, there really? are gonna be cases where I can imagine uh, big artists will do what's called windowing. Um, mm -hmm. Well, they'll make their uh, music only available um, on, you know, uh, pay, uh, pay service like Amazon or iTunes, then open it up to streaming. Um, but just, you know, when you look at the numbers, I mean, streaming was up 42 percent uh, over the past, uh, the first six months of the year. And uh, all album sales were down 15 percent. We're running out of time, but I think one of the takeaways here is how an artist is so in control of her own destiny now, when in the old days they were never in control. It's a, it's a really change in paradigm. Well, I'd say particularly if you're Taylor Swift and you've got, <laughs> that, kind of you've got that kind of power. Zach, as always, thank you. Thank you. Coming up tomorrow on the Rise Exchange, we'll break down the president's big speech on immigration and the overall implications on the economy. Let's take a look at the markets. It was a record day again for the Dow and S&P 500, both up and the Nasdaq in the green as well. I'm Andrew Schmertz. Thanks for watching the Rise Exchange. We will see you here tomorrow.
In business today, three things to know. First, President Obama makes his case tonight for going it alone on immigration reform. We'll preview his plans and the firestorm it may cause. Then, Car Wars is Uber, the new evil empire. And together, we can rule the galaxies. Loved by customers, but hated by a growing list of groups, could there be Uber trouble ahead? And Taylor Swift tries to shake it off as streaming music service Spotify steps up its battle with the pop superstar. Arise Exchange starts now. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Schmertz. President Obama's solo act on immigration reform debuts tonight. Mr. Obama will address the nation to lay out his plans for executive action that could clear the way for hundreds of thousands of currently illegal immigrants to stay in the U.S. legally. Republicans say any unilateral move by the president would be unconstitutional and they plan to fight it. Joining us now is our senior Washington, D.C. correspondent, Colin Campbell. Colin, why don't you preview for us what the president is expected to say? Well, the president is going to do and announce that he is willing to do as much as he can up to the limit of what he is legally able to do. And this is why. There are Republicans who are saying that they will take the president to court or they will try to shut down his plan of using executive action on immigration, which would shield anywhere between four to five million undocumented immigrants from being deported. Now, the president has said this is an issue that is long overdue to be taken care of. If we remember the president was going to talk about this and, and sign an executive order even before the midterm elections. He's postponed that. And now the call for him to do something has become even greater. So he is going to announce executive action on